Welcome back to another episode on the Boom Bus Channel. I'm your host Terry, and today we got some NFL news. Um, well, some more news. We talked yesterday about Jamal Adams, but uh, now uh, this already happened. But wanted to bring this up because I thought it was important. Uh, you got Laurent, um, the starting guard from the Kansas City Chiefs, opting out for this season, and then also the NFL PA and the NFL coming together uh, on agreements to changes to the CBA. For this upcoming year that some say address the concerns about COVID, but I don't know if I agree. So um, if you seen once the NFL announced um, that they were going to be returning to camp as normal, a bunch of players tweeted out um, and used the hashtag we want to play um, to call out the NFL basically uh some of it was addressing concerns some of it was just simply just calling them out and so um in effort to respond to that really behind closed doors because I didn't hear anything about this till now they got together to come to an agreement now there's a lot of details I'm assuming that we don't know and things continue to come out but uh from the things that we've heard reported it doesn't seem like much has changed. I mean, um, there was even a letter that was obtained that was sent out to, I, I don't know, I guess it was all the players, but it might have just been the Chiefs or something. But the, the letter went out and uh, one of these reporters got it. And so they tweeted it out and I just retweeted it if you want to go look at it. But the NFL PA sent out the preseason calendar and so I'm basing off of this. Now, there might be language in the, the agreement that uh, we don't see, but at least basing it off of this, there's one major problem that stands out to me, which really was one of the biggest issues I would have if I'm a player or a coach coming in and I didn't have an answer to, and that's testing. So that was a big question. How are we going to test? Like, we heard a lot about how the bubble is doing it and what they plan on doing. And so that was a big question. How are we going to do that now? Um, looking at this letter that they sent, it seems as if they're only testing you once. Um, it doesn't say once, but there's only three days worth of testing. And that's within the first four days of camp. So you test day one and two, no testing on day three, and then you test day four. Now, I don't know if that means the whole team test or they're spreading out the test between the whole team. Because it's somebody working with a body of people that need to be tested and as we get ready as well. I know that there's only a certain amount of people that can be in there around there at the same time. And so... I think it's possible that they're splitting their whole roster up between three days of testing, but they do got money. And I mean, it takes a lot of staff. So if you got that type of staff, then maybe they're testing the whole team three times. Um, but either way, that's not enough. And I don't understand how it was this big hoop and holler about the NFL being safe. And this is what they agreed on because you got to understand, like, this isn't, I mean, it, well, it was really like anything. Like, if you test for um, AIDS or something or cancer, you don't have it. That don't mean you never going to have it. That means you don't have it right now. It's a snapshot. So even if they test you three days in the first four days and you're positive the whole time, what it looks like is from August 1st until the season, there's no more testing. And that's crazy because, A, you're getting tested before the contact, which they were going to do anyway because they want to know who's positive. But now you're not getting tested after you get into contact with people. And that's the real conversation. So if you don't get tested or if they don't test you, now we're talking about players, multiple players walking around being carriers throughout this camp unknowingly. And I, for the life of me, don't understand how that makes any sense. That defeats the whole purpose of testing and what you're trying to do. And so that's the biggest thing that stands out to me. Um, outside of that, it is just really a lot about money. Um, it's a lot about 
where money is flipped over and where it's supposed to go and all that different stuff. And so um, the salary cap was a big issue. People wanted to know because that does affect how much players can make and all that in roster sizes. So uh, it's going to be smaller for the short term and then it will uh, ramp up later. Um, well, not the short, but like next year, it'll be shorter. And then we'll see what happens. If things are fine, then the money will go back up. But anyway, that's nothing really do with anything. Um, also, the roster sizes, I forgot what it was. And this was a big question. And it, it kind of still is because you have no preseason games. So it's really hard. Um it is really hard that for you to, you know, make yourself uh, an impression when you aren't playing against other people. And so that's going to be kind of tough. But it seems like they'll be able to have 80 players until uh, August 16th. And of course, you can't have that many uh, people in the building uh, at one time anyway. So. A lot of things are going to have to be spread out. They talked a lot about uh, staggering meetings between either vets and rookies or rookies and second years, all that stuff. So all that's going to happen. Um, and yeah, so the biggest thing for me is the testing uh, because they, they lay out a schedule of what training camp is going to look like. And players are creatures of habit. They want to know exactly what it looks like. So it's a ramp up. They're going to, you know, start out conditioning and then get into some uh, helmet only stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be, I mean, not normal schedule, but it's going to be a normal pace, uh, kind of how it usually is. But again, for me, there's no real mention of more testing, which is concerning. And then on top of that, um, you got this opt out. So what they essentially said is that you have high risk opt out where if you are in a high risk category, then you can opt out and they're going to give you a three hundred fifty thousand dollars stipend, um, which I mean, I'm sure there's a reason for the, the language being different. But for the high risk people, it's called a stipend. And so your contract uh, will toll. And then if you're a voluntary opt out, so you don't have to play this year, you get a hundred and fifty thousand dollars salary advance and your contract will toll as well. So toll basically means delay, like your right to um to that salary will be delayed. And so I'm assuming it will be delayed until next season. And so um but that's a legal term. And so basically it just means it'll be delayed. And so it's not like you're getting cut. It's not guaranteed or anything or whatever. It, their right to you as a player and your right to that salary will get delayed to next year. Um, but, uh, yeah. So obviously they're paying more for people that's high risk. If you just want to not play, then you'll get a little less, but I'm not mad at that. Like some people are like, Oh my God, compared to these contracts. But I don't care, bro. That's that's hella money. It's probably more money I'll ever get in the salary. So 150k, 350k sounds good to me. It's nice that they're giving them some money, and it's not like, oh well, just get out of here. I'm glad. Now behind closed doors, there might be some, you know, conversations of trying to force people. But at least in the front. They don't seem to be forcing anybody or threatening anybody. And then high risk people with sickle cell, which is African American or happens in African Americans. And so that's a lot of people in the league. Asthma, type 2 diabetes. Um, and so those are some of the factors. Now, with that opt out, you got uh, Laurent Duvernay Tardif, I believe is how you say it. Um, from the Kansas City Chiefs. He is a starting guard uh, for them last year and all that. Um, so he obviously, I mean, he's a solid player, not like a superstar or anything, but a very unique player. Uh, came in older, came from uh, out of the country, 
and is also a medical doctor. He finished his doctorate, um, I believe, last year. I was watching him, watching the videos. And so this is interesting. This is interesting because he's the first player to take the opt-out clause voluntarily, and he did it hours after they announced it. So he already knew. And so there we'll, we'll get to – no, let's start there. There's the question of the trend. Okay, what type of players will opt out? Just like with the uh, NBA in the bubble, it was like who would opt out? There was a big conversation, you know, just because sports media needs something to talk about. But then when it got down to it, it was like, okay, most players are going to show up. But then that made it more crazy when somebody did opt out. And so even though these players aren't like big time, um, it, it was just like, whoa, somebody actually opt out because there is this perceived notion that if you opt out, they're going to blackball you or something like that. And I could believe it. I mean, I don't think it's 100 percent true for everybody, but I do think that fear is legitimate because the NFL is a bunch of money hungry people and that's the way business goes. So. That was a legitimate fear of people. And so it was like, I don't think anyone's going to opt out. So now he opted out and you immediately had Andy Reef endorse him. You had uh, Andy Reid. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> then you got Pat Mahomes endorsing him as if like, oh, we got to smooth it over. I think it's perfectly fine. Why well, put the clause in there if you don't, if they can't do it? And so there's a question about who might do this. And I think much like the NBA, they they're not they're just not i mean you would definitely think if lebron said no i'm not going to the bubble that would completely shut it down now you don't have that exact star power in the nfl especially because it's not a bubble but at the same time it's like there could be some interesting moves if some big name players opted out um, especially at quarterback. And so we'll see. But I, my sense is, no, they're not really going to do it because there's too much pressure and they want to play. And there's too many people that think they're invincible with this. And um, for some reason, the absence of evidence is the evidence of absence to them. And so they're like, okay, well, I don't have any info that tells me that it won't do long-term damage or any, or that it will do long-term damage or blah, blah, blah. So I'm assuming it won't. And so that's fine. I mean, people make their choices. But um, the thing that was interesting to me is that Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes both tried to spin this. Um, they both saw and, – and when I read it, I was like, I just don't know. Like, I don't know Laurent, but just seeming from the type of guy he is, that you know, seeing the videos of him behind the scenes and working on his degree and um, the stuff he talks about in the medical field, I just was like, I don't know, man. I really don't know if this is true because Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes both like, oh, he's a doctor. I couldn't imagine what it's like being on the front lines. He's a giver. I get it that he don't want to be away from that right now. He's got more important things and he's choosing to help people over football. And I'm like, I just I just don't see that he would say that. I, I, I don't because he's done too much while also playing football. I don't really believe that he would be like, oh, I have to stay here. I can't do both. I mean, it's not that he could do both full time, but obviously he knows how to do both of those things. And so this would be nice PR where it's like we're supporting his decision, his right. And then also on top of that, um, he's just a really good guy. He's leaving because he wants to help, except Laurent put out his own statement in which he says clearly that he's not playing because he won't knowingly spread that disease. And so he said that being on the front lines gave him a different perspective of the type of stress that the disease has on people or the virus, excuse me, and also the uh, ex the severity of the virus. And so because of that, he's not going to knowingly become a carrier. He's not going to knowingly spread this to people who can spread it to their family and all these other things. And so I'm sure the NFL and they're, they're like kind of burying the article now 
I'm sure the NFL doesn't want that being out there, but that's what he said. And so I think it's interesting that Mahomes and Reed tried to spin it as if like, um, he's, oh, he's just doing it because he wants to be in his work. Like, no, he very much said like, we shouldn't be playing football. And that's been the notion for the longest. So anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.